solve for x. And we have x times x minus 5 times 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now let's think about this for a second. If we have the product of a bunch of numbers, if we have the product of a and b and c, and I told you that the product is equal to 0, what do we know about either a or b or c? Well, this tells us at least one of these numbers has to be equal to 0. The only way to get the product of numbers being equal to 0 is if at least one of these numbers are equal to 0. So this means that a is equal to 0, or b is equal to 0, or, or c is equal to 0. And it's not just the case if you had 3. If I had a, b, c, d equal to 0, that means one of those numbers could be equal to 0. At least one of them has to be equal to 0. All of them could be 0, or 1 could be 0, and the other two could be non-zero. So let's apply the same principle here. We have the product of two, three expressions. We have that expression there, we have that expression there, and that expression there. The product is equal to 0. So that tells us that either x is equal to 0, or, or x minus 5 is equal to 0 x minus 5 is equal to 0, or, or 2x plus 3 is equal uh, to 0. Sometimes that's called the principle of 0 products. But they're just saying, look, if I take the product of a bunch of things and they equal 0, at least one of those things need to be equal to 0. So that's all we're applying here. So we've actually already found one solution. x could be equal to 0. To find the other solutions, let's solve these equations. So if x minus 5 is 0, if you add 5 to both sides of that equation, we get x is equal to 5. So that is our second solution. x could be equal to 5. And then finally over here, if we solve 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, we can subtract 3 from both sides. And we get 2x is equal to negative 3. And then we can divide both sides by 2. And we get x is equal to negative, negative 3 halves. And we have our three solutions. And we could check them. We could check them. If you put x is equal to 0 into this first thing, what's going to happen? You're going to have, let's, let's check this one right over here. You're going to have 0 times 0 minus 5, which is negative 5, times 2 times 0, 0 plus 3, times 3. Now clearly, this is equal to 0. I didn't even have to evaluate these two things. I put ahead of 0 here. 0 times anything else is going to be equal to 0. So that works. Could try this guy out. So if x is equal to 5, you're going to have 5 times 5 minus 5, which is 0. And that makes sense, because we got the solution by assuming that maybe the second term was 0. And then times 2 times 5 plus 3 is 13. We don't even have to look at the other ones, because we know that middle term is 0. So clearly, this whole thing is going to simplify to 0. And the last one, and you almost don't have to work it out, because you know that it's, when you evaluate x at negative, when x is negative 3 halves, it's going to make this last term 0. And when this last term is 0, it doesn't matter what these first two terms are. The whole thing is going to be 0. But let's just do it just for fun. So if you put that x in, you're going to get negative 3. Let me do it in that same magenta color. You're going to have, what happened to my magenta? It feels like my magenta disappeared. I'll do it in purple. You're going to have negative 3 halves. That's hard to read. I'll do it in green. Negative 3 halves times negative 3 halves minus 5 times 2 times negative 3 halves is negative 3 plus 3. Now that is clearly equal to 0. I don't even have to evaluate this. I have a bunch of stuff times 0. It's clearly going to be equal to 0. So all three of our solutions work.